a space settlement floating out there in the cosmos. It's not sci-fi. But, as always, there is a catch. Look at this tiny deserted asteroid. It may look lonely and barren, but if you peek inside, you'll see life blooming inside of it. These days, many people now live right inside these asteroids. It's not sci-fi. According to researchers, we might be able to create futuristic cities the size of Manhattan on gigantic space rocks. Of course, there's a catch. The asteroid we choose as our base has got to be at least a thousand feet wide. Though it's weird why life is inside this asteroid and not on its surface. You see, we can't really live right on asteroids. That's because we're not the little prince who indeed lived on an asteroid, according to the plot, but because there's too little gravity and too much radiation for us to handle if we chill outside. There are possible theoretical ways to stay on the surface, but it's going to be extravagant. So the only option is living inside asteroids. Nothing screams wildly theoretical like building an asteroid city. Living in space without any gravity isn't as romantic as it sounds. Researchers show that when people spend too much time in zero gravity, things start getting weird. Their eyeballs pop out, retinas detach, muscles shrink, and bones become as fragile as a potato chip. But imagine this, a space settlement floating out there in the cosmos. If you've watched enough sci-fi, you'd picture a massive structure spinning round and round. It spins to create gravity for all the lucky folks living inside. There's an actual prototype of this wizardry, the O'Neill Cylinder. This device is named after a physicist, Gerard O'Neill, who came up with the idea for NASA in the 70s. Now, there isn't a ton of data on this, but humans need roughly one-third of Earth's gravity to function properly. An O'Neill Cylinder may not be able to generate massive amounts of gravity, but the genius behind it, Mr. O'Neill himself, designed them to spin around their long axis. This device creates a gravity-like force called centrifugal force. So if we ever get to use that, we'll be living happily on the inner surface of the cylinder, feeling pulled downward away from the center. But as always, there is a catch. When the team crunched the numbers, they realized that the asteroids would break apart way before they could reach the speeds necessary to keep us grounded. And to make matters worse, most of these asteroids were more like loosely assembled piles of rock than a solid chunk. The small ones, like less than 6 miles across, are a mix of sand, pebbles, rocks, and boulders. They're all held together by the weak force of their own gravity. If you were to spin one of these asteroid buddies, all those parts would go flying off into space. Not cool. However, scientists didn't give up and they elaborated on the idea. They needed to find a way to keep the asteroids together. They played around with different ideas, and they produced something crazy. Now, if you were to carry all your personal belongings every day right in your hands, at some point, the situation would be out of your control. You'd have to collect all your stuff from the floor. But you're smart, and you carry a bag, right? Well, it seems that if we want to control an asteroid, all we need is a ginormous bag. But not just any bag, a massive, flexible, and super lightweight mesh bag made from teeny tiny carbon nanofibers. These fibers are like tubes that are only a few atoms wide, but boy are they strong. So once we've got this cylinder-shaped bag all set up, we can start slowly spinning the asteroid using rocket motors deep within the rubble. And as it spins faster and faster, it'll start flinging all those pebbles, rocks, and boulders. And guess what? The carbon nanowire webbing is going to go flying out with them. This bag will be expanding and expanding until it reaches its absolute limit. And then the rubble inside slams into the now super tight webbing. It's like a crazy explosion of debris compacting together to create this massive hollow cylinder made entirely of concrete. Once all the dust settles, you can build entire towns, cities, parks, and even farmland on the inside of the cylinder. This is like something straight out of O'Neill's designs. You can even enclose the whole inner surface with a transparent roof. Outside of this incredible living area, 
you've got these thick concrete walls that are like superhero shields protecting against radiation. So not only do you have this space to live in, but you're also super safe from any harmful stuff outside. We still don't have this magic bag, as those magic carbon nanowires aren't mass-produced yet. But scientists claim that, according to the laws of physics, a tiny asteroid, like a few football fields put together, can be transformed into 22 square miles of living space. As of now, about 1.5 million people are living in Manhattan, and there are like tens of thousands of asteroids just hanging around in our solar system. You do the math. Seems like everyone will have a sweet spot to crash in space. Building a city in space is no easy feat. The main challenge, still, is to create a self-sustaining closed system that can keep going for the long haul. You see, cities on Earth rely on a much larger area to survive than just their own boundaries. But in space, the farther away from external resources a space city is, the more it needs to close its loops for oxygen, water, and food. Take the ISS, for example. It's about 40% efficient in recycling oxygen. But even then, its CO2 levels are always sky-high. NASA is on the case, though, trying to figure out how to magically turn that CO2 back into oxygen. Once we've tackled the basics, like protecting ourselves from radiation, dealing with pesky gravity, and finding some air to breathe, it's time to get creative in space. Enter 3D printing and rocket engines, the dynamic duo that will pave the way for space settlements. With 3D printing, we can kiss goodbye to relying on Earth for spare parts. We'll simply whip them up locally, cutting out the middleman. We can even use 3D printers to whip up a delicious pizza in a couple of minutes. Of course, we'll need some fresh ingredients, but your dinner might just be a push-button away in space. To truly thrive out there, we'll need to tap into the riches of asteroids. These celestial treasures are bursting with raw materials, perfect for creating solar arrays, building materials for our colonies, and so much more. And let's not forget about comets. These icy wonders are like cosmic water fountains, providing us with precious H2O for drinking, bathing, and even shielding ourselves from radiation. Plus, we can use that water to produce hydrogen and oxygen for rocket fuel and fuel cells. So, let's say we pull this off. Can you imagine people living or born in space might end up being different from you and me? Like if humans can have babies up there, these space colonies might develop some cool cultures. They might even come up with their own languages, and get this, they could even evolve new physical traits. It's wild to think that just after 300 years, a colony of 2,000 people could look and act so differently from us. They might have different hair textures, skin types, and even be taller or more slender to deal with that low-gravity situation. We might even develop new organs to protect us from cosmic rays. Or we'll have gill-like structures to breathe carbon dioxide. Hey, I know, it sounds crazy. But these scientists are working on developing these carbon nanotubes as we speak. So maybe one day, we'll be living it up on our very own asteroid crib. It might seem like asteroid cities are just too far-fetched, but let's take a trip back in time for a moment. In 1900, no one had ever flown in an airplane. But today, thousands of people are zooming through the sky, comfortably seated in chairs, traveling at hundreds of miles an hour high above the ground, unaware that their luggage is on another plane going to a different destination. Ah well. <laughs>